Hello there. Today I'm going to land my aeroplane at a beautiful grass strip in the heart of the English countryside. We're heading to Dorset in the southwest of Great Britain to meet a movie legend who's recently bought an airfield there. Welcome to The Flying Reporter. The Flying Reporter YouTube channel is supported by Anglian Flight Centres. This episode is sponsored by AOPA UK. For those who don't know me, I'm John Hunt, a private pilot and former BBC TV news reporter, hence now known as The Flying Reporter. I make YouTube videos of my flying adventures across the UK and Europe, sometimes with my son, known as Bertie. Someone on radar, Squawk 3671, Squawk 3671. Go for you, Victor. Three. I'm using today's flight to teach him how to enter the correct transponder codes for me. One of my regular features is the Flying Reporter Aerodrome Review, where I tour airfields and show what's on offer there. Today, I'm visiting Compton Abbas, 20 miles north of Bournemouth. Compton Abbas has recently been acquired by acclaimed film director Guy Ritchie. Now, as far as I know, Guy Ritchie doesn't have a pilot's licence and isn't known for being particularly interested in aviation. So why is a man best known for gritty crime movies such as Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels getting himself involved in a small airstrip in southern England? I'm going to find out just as soon as I can get my four-seater Piper Arrow back on the ground. Compton Abbas has always been a popular airfield with flying visitors, but now thanks to the revamped restaurant Service, please. and I suppose the pull of Guy Ritchie, it seems to have become a much bigger draw than it used to be for local people as well. Guy Ritchie lives just over a mile away. He took over the airfield in February. So Guy Ritchie, I like what you've done with the place. So do I. Is it there yet? Is it where you No, think? no, it's not. But I'll tell you what, it's, I think it's a lot further along than... I mean, it's a sort of three-year plan. And I think we're sort of six months into a three-year plan. which It feels about where we should be. When you took over the place, and it's a much-loved, cherished asset, isn't it, to, to pilots and general aviation, I think people were concerned. What's he going to do? Yeah. Is he going to shut down the flying? What, what is the plan then? Are you, clearly, you've kept the flying going. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like the flying, and I particularly like this aesthetic. Anything to do with the world of uh, heritage and aviation, I, it lends, lends itself to my aesthetic sensibilities. The whole world of it, in, it ev evokes a sense of romanticism, um, which I must say I'm a great advocate of. So there was a couple of reasons that we got interested in the airfield and one of them is I live in it, right? So, you know, that makes a difference. But it's social hubs. There seems to be an, an assault on social hubs over the last few years and people have become more and more isolated and there seems to be a desire to force people into their own homes and I'm very against that. So I'm a big, a big advocate of pubs and anywhere that can create an alibi of getting the public together. And this seemed to be like an obvious, um, an obvious place in which to exercise that plan. You know? And it seems to be working in the sense that I'm very happy about the amount of people that come here. And really that's the idea, is to encourage some cultural, uh, local cultural socialisation. Um, and that's working for us. And if it can look attractive too, then I, I, I'm very happy about it. I was listening to some of the people, I mean, yesterday, I don't know if you know, but it was, it was a terrible day here, very grey and cloudy and not many planes, I don't think any planes were flying. It was, it was supposed to be the beginning of summer <laughs> yesterday. It didn't, didn't work out that way, did it? And a lot of the people coming in were disappointed not to see the, the planes flying. It's, it's a, it's, you know, you've got those grand windows there now on the restaurant and that terrace all the way along the side of the runway and the, the seating and uh, the planes really fit into that picture, you think? I do, as I say, particularly the old ones. It's fun, funny enough, I watched Casablanca last night and I was under the impression it was Dakota, I just got corrected, it was not. But it's, again, so of that world, the idea of kind of small world aviation is very attractive to me, that the world is, a, is kind of a, a romantic village rather than an international airport, which have, 
has lost its romanticisms. Yeah, but well, you're definitely not that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we're definitely not that. No, no. I don't know to what extent you've been hands on with a kind of airfield, and you know, I know you're very much your creative um, input into the design of the restaurant and and everything else. But I mean, have you been able to pick up on? you know, what this world is like, the, the sort of flying world, the general aviation world. What surprised you about it, if anything? Enthusiasm. Um, like most uh, esoteric interests, there's such a passion. And it's the passion that's contagious. I was in love with the overall picture. But yeah, as you're on the journey, you start to realise the passion that's, that people have for this particular world. And as I say, that's contagious and great fun. So I, I have a suspicion there's a sort of fusion between those two worlds. I want it to look like it should look in a movie. Um, and that's fed by the enthusiasm and passion from uh, all the enthusiasts. We're a bit stuck in the mud sort of people, aviators, a lot you know, don't like change. And you've come in here and made, you know, some very big aesthetic changes. Um, and I know there've been some grumbles, I think, from some pilots who in the past, they could kind of come in, get a fast lane to the restaurant. Um, and now it, they, you know, obviously the, the restaurant is there to serve the local people and the visitors as well as the pilots. Any thoughts about that? Have you taken on board some of that feedback? Um, well, I think what it is is a three-year plan, as I've said, and I th we're six months into a, 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 th a three-year plan. So we will take on everyone's uh, position, but obviously some people want this and some people want that, and it contradicts. Um, they end up contradicting each other. So, you know, we have to make certain decisions. Uh, but as I say, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of the public. Um, so whatever it can do to encourage the public to come here but through the prism of an aesthetic lens so uh, in a way i think the world of a, uh, aviation has moved on too far i i want to recede back into the annals of history really and of a period that is just aesthetically and romantically pleasing so i'm trying to find a fusion between the old world and the new and i, I strangely, I'm more interested in the old world than, than I am the new. But I think there's a sweet spot that we can find here um, where everyone's happy. I like that sound. <laughs> uh, the restaurant then, I mean, you're a big foodie, aren't you? I am, and the restaurant, the truth is, is we're rather primitive at the moment in terms of the food and its delivery. But, you know, we're, we're working, I mean, I want it to be a thing. At the moment, it's not a thing. Uh, it's fine, and it's going in the right direction, and it's more than it was a few months ago. But... I'd like us to have an offering which is unique. In the moment, way? we're not unique. In what way? What, what are you trying to get to? Um, well, I'll let you know when it unfurls. <laughs> but what I really want is, is us to offer something that no one else offers, but at a price that's accessible to all. But something that's unique that no one else does. And I know what that is, and we're just going through the motions of doing it. I don't think you're a pilot. I had a look. I don't think you've... No, funnily enough, I took, I took lessons here. Did you really? Yeah, I did, yeah. As I was previously saying, I had a terrible fear of flying for 10 years, which seems to be in the family because my son doesn't like it either. Um, and in order to get over my fear of flying, I, I booked a course. And actually, that's where my enthusiasm came for sort of small planes. I couldn't believe that when you turned up here, within five minutes of me being here, I was airborne. <laughs> and the, the chap that was giving me a lesson went, look, do you want to go to Wales, Scotland, or the Isle of Wight. And I didn't realize it was as easy as, would you want one of these or one of these? Um, and that gave, gave birth to a sort of, again, a romantic idea about, oh, it can be as easy as that. And that's a very attractive position. Sadly, I haven't had enough time to capitalize on it, but that's the plan. You had one lesson? Oh, no, 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 I did a series. Okay. I did 20 lessons. Oh, wow, you, ne you were nearly there. I was nearly there, yeah, yeah, yeah but you didn't stick with it. No, it? no, no, no. Well, I also, I also know a couple of other chaps that have got, uh, ha have their PPL. PPL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they just, they just can't keep it up. So... You, you have know. to do it. You have to keep on it. it needs yeah, to I, be. you have to keep on it. Yeah. yeah. You know who did get one was Brad Pitt. Mm. And uh, it, it just hasn't kept it up. And I was surprised because he was so enthusiastic about it, right? You thought, oh, right, but it's, it's constant work you know to to keep up on these things yeah. i know you're you're off to is it tenerife next week yes so what are you up to at the moment i mean i, I don't follow you like 
what you're up to, so it'd be interesting to oh, It's all films, it's all yeah. films. We, did, we actually, uh, we f finished a film recently, which I'm editing at the moment, which is about the Second World War. And um, so it's, it's about the first secret mission um, that gave birth to uh, this, what do you call them, special? Special operations, SOE. SOE. Um, which gave birth to the SAS, the SBS. We see quite a lot of the SBS chaps down here, one reason or another, because they're so close. And it's about the first secret mission that took place under Churchill's authority against the establishment. So, uh, Operation Postmaster. So we, we're editing that at the moment. Um, and then we're off to Tenerife to make a film about, what's it about? <laughs> <laughs> it's about something. Uh, and then, no, we got quite a full, I, the older I get, the more I like working. So, you know, we try to keep our our menu uh, full, our dance our dance card full. Yeah, I don't know how you do it, and I, I'm interested to know to what extent the, the the kind of activities outside of the movie business, the airfield, the restaurant, the pub, the brewery, to, to what extent those offer you a welcome distraction from what must must be a fairly intensive. Uh, yeah, I mean, business. I like the world of creativity. So I actually, as long as I'm involved in the world of creativity, it's not taxing for me. It's, a, it's passion, you know, we're back to the issue of passion. So I, there's endless enthusiasm and energy in anything that you're, you're passionate about or and anything in the world of creativity. Hence, I like the world of creative beer making. I, I like the world of, I mean, we make barbecues, you know, and I've been... That I'm incredibly passionate about, outdoor eating. Um, we make houses, which is another world I'm incredibly passionate about. And it, it's only the creative aspects of all of those businesses that I'm interested in. And filmmaking is just an, another facet on the, on the profile of creativity. So anything to do with the profile of creativity, um, I, I get very excited about it. It's not hard for me. Well, I wish you luck with everything you're doing here. Thanks for keeping. Yeah, I have to tell you, it's just you know, this is also the other thing is it's just this is such a sort of refreshing world. Mm. Um, so you know, even those pictures, you know, it, they just they just invoke a kind of something. It's kind of that sweet spot of it's where sort of man, it, it's the best of man meets the best of nature. You know, because you, you've got the backdrop of the of the natural world, but you've got a kind of primitive expression, but nevertheless a pretty sophisticated primitive expression of man's ingenuity. And when you fuse those two together, and that's before aviation becomes too sophisticated. Once it becomes too sophisticated, then you get in, into the world of kind of extreme industry, and that's not what I'm interested in. But the, the romantic world, I find to be highly evocative. Well, super to meet you. Thanks, Thanks for everything you're doing here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's fair to say that Guy Ritchie is more a fan of Boeing Stearman's Tiger Moths and Spitfires than he is of Cirrus aeroplanes, TBMs or the modern Microlites. It was interesting to meet the new owner of Compton Abbas and I'll be sampling the menu in the new restaurant and for pilots taking a close look at how the procedures have changed here in a moment. First though, a quick shout out to my supporters club members, without whom I couldn't afford to make these productions. We've been on site here at Compton Abbas for three days, and as you can probably imagine, that gets very expensive. If you like what I do, please do consider joining the supporters club, because your small monthly contribution goes a long way, and you get bonus content and the chance of a one-to-one -one Zoom chat with me. I also need to thank AOPA UK for sponsoring this video. AOPA is the leading membership association for aircraft owners and pilots. They represent us at government and regulatory level and offer support to pilots when things go wrong. Right now, Flying Reporter followers can get a 25% discount on new one- and two-year memberships to AOPA UK by using the QR code or link on the screen or the link in the video description. Failing that, just search the web for the Flying Reporter AOPA discount and it should pop up for you. So as no doubt you've already seen, they've had a major refit here uh, in the restaurant area. It's much bigger, it's much airier, um, huge windows looking out onto the airfield, which is going to be nice on a nice day. Um, taking a look at the menu, um, it's 
not your average kind of uh, greasy spoon type food. And I think Compton Abbas never really was that, was it? It always was something a bit special, but they've really gone to town. Um, they've got, you know, decent chefs in here, massive, massive staff team here. So this is what they've got on the menu. The Dorset Flyer Burger, uh, £16.50. Charred Chicken Caesar Salad, £13.25. Gritchy Rarebit Soldiers, which is what I'm going to have. Indulgent Cheesy Rarebit made with local Gritchy Stout, served with sweet and tangy house pickles, £13.50. Um, the Compton Steak Sandwich, uh, Zingy Smoked Mackerel Pate, Watermelon, Fennel and Feta, Salad, £10.25, and wood fire sourdough flatbreads. Uh, meat options, £15. Veggie options, £14. And you can have sides of fries, house slaw, um, flatbreads. And there's a kiddies menu as well. Um, Bertie's going to have the mac and cheese, that's £6.25. And all the other options on there are roughly a similar sort of prices with uh, burgers, pizza slices, and uh, chicken goujon. So there is something here for everyone. Um, it's probably gone a bit more upmarket than um, than it used to, and um, but I think it's really nice actually to have an airfield with with proper food establishments, proper sit down food establishments. There are very few of those I found um, in the UK where you can sit down and have a proper meal, feel like you've gone out for the day rather than just sort of ending up in some greasy spoon type cafe. So um, well done to the uh, the new team here for uh, upping their game on that. And, and of course, the drinks. Bertie is uh, devouring his hot chocolate, always has hot chocolate when he comes out. And I am going for some of Guy, Guy Rich's beer because I've not tried it yet and I'm um, keen to see what it's like. Because I'm not flying, by the way, I'm not flying today. <laughs> just, just, to, just to put you in the picture. quite refreshing actually it's quite nice if you're planning to fly in for food it really would be a good idea to book a table the restaurant is very popular with locals and the team here would hate for you to miss out they do have an area for visiting pilots and residents but even those tables get quickly taken we're going to talk now about what's changed procedurally for flying visitors since the new management took over now, what I wanted to talk about first of all was PPR. Uh, for those not in the know, PPR stands for Prior Permission Required. And a lot of our airfields in the UK are privately owned, and therefore it's only courteous, it would seem, in the UK to obtain permission uh, to land. That's why we do that here. Now, in the past, I think if you hadn't got PPR and you come into Compton Abbas, they would have just let you in, as many places do. But now they're strictly applying the PPR here. And if you haven't got PPR and you call up on the radio on a whim to, to come and land, they will turn you away unless you're in some kind of emergency, urgency, you've got somebody on board who's sick, or maybe it's a weather diver. Of course, in those circumstances, uh, they will let you land. Now that might all sound a bit over the top and a bit unnecessary. And um, I've been talking to the airfield management about that. They say the reason why they are strictly applying PPR is that they found that people who don't PPR tend to be the ones that mess up, basically, screw up the circuit, blast through the noise abatement areas and cause everyone a lot of problems. And so they want to encourage people to, to get a phone up for PPR because they can then check that you have to check the no tams. You, you do know that there are events on and so the circuit's slightly different, for example. Another reason that they use PPR uh, is to pass tactical information about the runway state, the fueling um, availability, that kind of thing. I know a lot of airfields seem to use PPR just solely to gather email addresses or to tick a box. Here they do genuinely use PPR to pass you uh, information that's going to be useful to your arrival. For example, during your call, the ops team will be able to let you know if there are any events taking place on the day of your visit which could affect the way you join the circuit, and they'll even take table bookings for the restaurant, which is actually quite helpful, don't you think? Compton's runway is grass, and it isn't the smoothest I've come across, to be brutally honest. I often find myself bouncing around a little during takeoff and landing. Also, you need to be aware that you can get some really shocking turbulence on both 08 and 26, takeoff and landing, 
if there's a southerly component to the wind because of the trees along the southern airfield boundary. Take my word for it, don't underestimate this hazard. Compton now uses an altitude for the circuit, 1800 feet on the Q&H. They prefer that pilots don't use QFE because of the high elevation and their concern about pilots potentially missetting their altimeters. They also want to remind pilots to fly the crosswind leg of their overhead joints in the standard fashion, i.e. over the threshold at 90 degrees to the runway, continuing to the downwind leg before turning downwind. There are noise abatement turns from both runways on departure. Check your flight guide or airfield website for details. That concludes my visit to the newly refurbished Compton Abbas. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, can I ask you please to subscribe to my YouTube channel so as not to miss my next instalment. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, fly safely my friends.